Betco, the name to count on for better resources in chemicals, equipment, programs, process, and achieving continuously better results for over 50 years. Betco, creating better resources for facilities maintenance professionals. Betco Resources and Process Management Training Library, expanding competencies for cleaning professionals. Learning to become a professional custodian or housekeeper can be a challenging and rewarding career. Your job is important to the image of the facility and to the health of all who enter the building. As with every job, you must first master the basics before you're able to tackle the more complex cleaning tasks and procedures. By following the lessons provided in this training, you will be able to save time with your cleaning efforts, increase productivity, work smarter, not harder, and be on your way to becoming a valuable cleaning professional. This training module, which is one in the Betco Resource and Process Management series, focuses on basic cleaning techniques for cleaning maintenance professionals. This module will cover preparation and approach, wiping, high dusting, dusting, windows, dust mopping, wet mopping, policing, dilution control, daily detail and project cleaning, and cleanup. The purpose of this overview is to provide a basic knowledge on popular daily cleaning tasks. It does not cover complete cleaning applications or techniques for entire rooms or surfaces. Betco has over 300 specialty cleaning products and a full line of equipment and accessories. The following chemicals will be utilized throughout this module. Betco Bright MSP Multi-Surface Polish, Deep Blue Glass and Surface Cleaner, Dust Mop Treatment, PH7 All-Purpose Neutral Cleaner or Quatstat Broad Spectrum Disinfectant. When preparing for any cleaning task, be sure that you have all the necessary equipment and chemicals for each procedure that will be performed. Load your cart with all the properly labeled cleaners that will be needed. Double check your supplies and always remember your personal protective equipment. Follow universal precautions for all bloodborne pathogen spills. Read and understand the MSDS for every chemical that you use. Before proceeding with your tasks for the day, take a minute to think about how to make the most of your time. For instance, does it make sense to wet mop the hallways before you are finished cleaning the restrooms? or high dusting after you have wiped down the furniture? Probably not. Remember these simple rules for cleaning. Clean from top to bottom, bringing the soil to the lowest level. Clean from dry to wet. Begin cleaning from dirtiest to cleanest. Use a pattern such as working clockwise around the room when dusting or wiping walls. And finally, when mopping, start from the furthest corner and work toward the door. Following these rules will help you make the most of your time and get the best results from your cleaning efforts. There are two basic techniques to wiping, spray and wipe and damp wipe. Usually, your chemical label will recommend the best method based on product or procedure. To spray and wipe, simply spray the surface to be cleaned with an ample amount of product. If using a disinfectant, allow for the proper contact time before wiping. For damp wipe procedure, spray the sponge or cloth with the appropriate cleaner. Wipe in a consistent pattern, such as up and down, then back and forth, to ensure that you cover an entire surface. Be sure to overlap your strokes. Typically, you will use a spray and wipe approach for surfaces that have visible soils, such as urinals, toilets, or spots on walls. Damp wiping is most effective for surfaces that need a lighter cleaning, such as desktops and countertops. Damp wiping is also best when chemical residue should be limited, such as on phones and drinking fountains. Learning which approach to use can save time, decrease product usage, and limit chemical exposure. It's amazing how much dust and debris gets trapped on the fixtures and crevices above our heads. 
If high dusting is neglected, then the soil can affect the air quality and breed harmful microorganisms. Use a high dust tool to gather dust and debris from the top of ceiling and wall fixtures and corners several times a week. Work clockwise around the room. Be careful not to overextend your arms. If necessary, carefully use a ladder or stepping stool. When finished, shake the tool into a trash receptacle. If dust is visible on furniture, it is most effective to use a cleaning polish, such as Betco Bright Multi-Surface Polish. Always be sure to follow manufacturer's recommendations for cleaning surfaces. Spray a clean cloth with the cleaner and begin damp wiping the top of the furniture and work your way down. Pay close attention to furniture legs and spindles where dust and dirt can build up. A feather duster can be used for lighter cleaning tasks. Remember to work clockwise around the room to ensure you don't overlook anything. When it's necessary to clean windows, start by gathering your supplies and preparing your glass cleaning solution, such as deep blue glass and surface cleaner. Use clear image, non-ammoniated glass cleaner for tinted windows. Follow the label instructions for dilution ratios. You may want to lay out a floor covering, post caution signs, and position your ladder if necessary. Thoroughly wet the glass with a sponge or brush to loosen all dirt. Use a sponge or cloth to go around the glass against the frame to pick up dirt you may have pushed around the frame. With the squeegee tilted at an angle so that two inches of rubber touches the glass, start at the top corner and draw the squeegee along the top of the glass. This is called cutting the water. Wipe the squeegee blade with the cloth. Next, start on the dry surface at the top of the glass and next to the frame. Draw the squeegee down to about three inches off the bottom of the glass, then wipe the blade. Repeat until you've covered the entire surface of the glass. Be sure to overlap each stroke. Do not put too much pressure on the squeegee. To finish the strip at the bottom of the glass, soak up the excess water with a sponge or cloth. Dry the water from the frame, but be sure not to touch the glass. Using a dry mop, Wipe any excess to prevent a slippery floor. As simple as it seems, dust mopping is a very important step to floor care maintenance. Lifting the surface dirt helps prevent it from getting deep down into the finish. It also prepares it for wet cleaning. Use the appropriate size mop head for the floor space. Larger dust mops help you cover more floor in a shorter time, and smaller dust mops work better in smaller rooms with obstacles. To begin, spray the dust mop with dust mop treatment, such as Betco dust mop treatment. Some procedures or floor surfaces may not require the use of dust mop treatments. Be sure to talk with your supervisor if you're unsure of when to use dust mop treatment. Starting at the furthest corner and working toward the door, hold the mop handle at approximately a 45 degree angle and begin to push the mop forward. Be sure to overlap your strokes and shake the mop frequently to unload the debris. If necessary, remove gum and stickers with a putty knife during this procedure. When finished, gather the piles of debris with a dustpan and counter brush. Before proceeding to wet mopping, be sure to dust mop to gather loose soil and debris. Prepare the appropriate cleaning solution in the mop bucket with a wringer. In most instances, you will either prepare a neutral cleaning solution, such as PH7 all-purpose neutral cleaner, or a disinfectant solution, such as Quadstat. Always post caution signs before wet mopping. Place the mop in the cleaning solution. Wring it out until the mop is only damp. Start at the furthest corner and work toward the door. Mop the area lengthwise along the baseboards. Then use a figure eight stroke on the balance of the area. Be careful not to splash baseboards. This could leave dirty residue. Once the mop bucket solution becomes visibly soiled, change the solution. When finished, rinse the bucket wringer and allow to air dry. All mops should be rinsed thoroughly or laundered and hung to dry. Never use a musty or malodorous mop to clean. Policing is the frequent cleaning of highly visible areas of your facility, such as restrooms, entranceways, and busy hallways. 
Being alert for debris on floors and carpets, spills, fingerprints on glass and doors, overflowing trash receptacles, and low paper supplies enhances the facility's appearance and shows that you care about the impression it makes. Everyone in the department should be in the habit of policing. Keeping a facility clean requires teamwork and professionalism on your part. Following dilution ratios and measuring with a proper measuring device when mixing chemical solutions is crucial. Chemical management systems are usually available for the chemicals that you use on a daily basis. These systems ensure that dilution rates are correct. Using them can make your job faster and easier. If a chemical management system is not installed in your facility or not available for the product you'll be mixing, be sure that you understand dilution ratios and how to properly mix chemicals. The workbook that accompanies this training will have more information to help you with dilution ratios. Never glug chemicals when mixing. This can cause the product to not work effectively and may create unsafe situations. Only mix chemicals according to manufacturer's instructions. Please remember that using more chemical does not mean that it will give better results. Setting up a cleaning schedule for an entire facility can be a big challenge. Breaking down cleaning tasks into daily, detail, and project cleaning can assist your department with the upkeep of your facility. By understanding how tasks are scheduled for your building, you become a major part of the quality of cleanliness practiced by your department. Daily cleaning tasks involve procedures such as mopping, vacuuming, trash removal, and restroom cleaning. Detail cleaning tasks are done approximately once a month and usually include wiping vents, washing walls, carpet bonneting, and scrubbing and recoating floors. Project cleaning tasks are performed one to two times a year and usually involve strip and recoating floors, carpet extracting, wood floor refinishing, and furniture cleaning. Pay close attention to how these tasks are scheduled for your facility. Help your supervisor keep track of jobs that could be performed more or less often. Because some of these procedures happen only a few times a year, take a few minutes to brush up on the techniques before performing the job. The RPM training library includes a great deal of technical information on daily, detail, and project cleaning procedures, such as life cycle of floor care, life cycle of carpet care, and restroom cleaning. After finishing with any cleaning job, it's important to clean your equipment and store all equipment and tools in a clean, dry place. By taking care of the equipment in your facility, it lasts longer, works more dependably, and makes a good impression on you and your department. The job that you do is very important to the image of your facility and to the well-being of the people who come through the doors every day. Be proud of the skills you're developing and know that you truly make a difference in creating a safe, clean, and healthy environment.